Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I will highlight the five Devonian fossils that represent steps along the transition to a fully terrestrial tetrapod. You should be able to arrange a cladogram of Devonian tetrapods and illustrate the changes in anatomy that occurred during the transition toward living on land. Our first fossil is Estheopteron, a sarcoptrygian fish that lived in Canada during the late Devonian period. This fish ex exhibits a diaphyseal tail, the gill region is attached to the skull, and a number of fins are present, including the pectoral and pelvic fins, as well as a ventral and two dorsal fins. The teeth of Eusiopteron are complex and feature a folding of dentine called a labyrinthine teeth, which is found in some early tetrapods. But for the most part, Eusiopteron is a normal looking fully aquatic fish. The next fossil is Pandraichthys, a late Devonian advanced sarcoptrygian fish from Latvia. The skull of Pandraichthys is flattened with the eyes oriented on the top of the skull. Pandrichthys lacks the dorsal and ventral fins with only the pelvic and pectoral fins. It's thought that Pandrichthys was a nearshore fish which used its flattened head to prey on insects that lived along the shoreline. The next fossil we'll examine is Tiktaalik, which is from the late Devonian of northern Canada. Tiktaalik is unique in having the shoulder girdle separate from the opercular, subopercular, and extrascapular series. It has a neck! In addition, Tiltalic has a more advanced joint between the humerus and radius, allowing the early tetrapod fish to do push-ups and support the body against the ground. Now, like Pandrichthys, it features a flattened head with eyes positioned on the top of the head. The fossil has four sets of fins, two pectoral fins in the front and two pelvic fins in the back. A combination of ray, fin rays and more robust bones are found in the fins. The back of the skull features an ear notches for the tympanic membrane supported by a, a stapes, which meant that Tiltalic could listen above the water. The next fossil is Ancanthostega, which is known from the latest Devonian of Greenland. Now this fossil exhibits a more advanced shoulder girdle that's composed of a clethrum, a scapular coracoid with a joint for the humerus called a glenoid, as well as a clavicle and inner clavicle, and a weird bone called the anth clethrum, a bone that rests on top of the scapular coracoid. One of the most amazing things about Ancanth stega is the number of fingers or phalanges. They have eight digits, and in fact, many early tetrapods have more than five digits in the hands and feet. Now, before this discovery, people had assumed that five digits was the ancestral condition. But in reality, the number of digits is variable across vertebrates, although more than five is rare in advanced tetrapods. In the back, the pelvis is composed of three bones, the ilium, ischium, and pubis, with an acetabulum joint with the femur. The ilium attaches to the vertebral column near a sacral region. The leg bones were bulky and large, they likely did not give lift to the posterior half of the body. Like Tiltalic, Ancathstega had ear notches in the back of the skull, which is covered with bony plates that are grooved with lateral line canals that were used in water for sensory input. Ichthyostega is another early tetrapod from the latest Devonian of Greenland. It resembles Ancathstega but has more elongated femurs and tibia and fibia in the hind legs. This gave greater support for the posterior half of the body. The ribs are also very thick 
and likely helped in costal breathing of air while on land. The skull is still flat, with the eyes positioned on the top of the skull, indicating that it spent most of its time in the water, but had a greater ability to move across the landscape between ponds and rivers. Both the pectoral and pelvic girdles are rather large compared to the limbs. The tail is shorter, and likely the limbs were used more for swimming as well as walking in shallow water. Now these are not the only early fossil tetrapods, but they do represent the most well-known fossil forms. All right, so let's assemble a cladogram showing the relationships of these fossil forms and the uh, transitional characteristics that evolved during the late Devonian. The first character to evolve was bony elements descending down the limb, the lobe fins, which are asymmetrical. These more robust bones would later support a limb that could walk on land. The second character to evolve was a dorsally ventrally flattened skull with a frontal bone. Only pectoral and pelvic fins and the loss of the dorsal and ventral fins. A smaller caudal fin, a tail, and larger ribs which project ventrally in the body. The next major character to evolve was the separation of the pectoral girdle from the skull with a neck and shoulders. Thick ribs developed, ear notches on the skull for hearing above the water. The next character to evolve was carpal and tarsal bones forming fingers and toes. Eight fingers on each hand in Ant Cat Stega, loss of the scales, uh, many new bones in the shoulder and in the pelvis. And then in Ichthyostega, we see eight fingers and seven toes, a uh, more robust humerus and femur, which are elongated, larger ribs, and a reduced tail. Most of these fossils are found in a unique geographic region that includes uh, northern Canada, Greenland, and the Baltic. These regions were along the basin of the eastern side of Euro America, sometimes referred to as the Old Red Continent, which was a continent made of uh, Laurenta and Balica um, before the coming together of all the continents near the end of the Paleozoic that form uh, Pangaea. As such, northeastern North America, Greenland, and the Baltic are the places to explore the Devonian for other early tetrapods. Utah and much of the western United States was too deep in the ocean to see some of these nearshore fossils. One place in the United States that has fossils of this age is Pennsylvania and parts of New England, but finding exposures of rocks can be difficult. One of the things that uh, amazes me about the fossil record of early tetrapods is how sequential the conquest of land was and how over just about 20 million years in the late Devonian, vertebrates would be living on the landscape for the first time. If you'd like to learn more, I highly recommend two books. The first, Gaining Ground, The Origin and Evolution of Tetrapods by Jenny Clack and Your Inner Fish, A Journey into the 3.5 Billion Year History of the Human Body by Neil Schumann. The second book has been made into a television series, which I've linked below and aired on PBS here in the United States. All right, you should be able to arrange a cladogram of Devonian tetrapods and illustrate the changes in anatomy that occurred during the transition toward living on land. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website, benjamin Links are found in the descriptions below.